This is Sal with Jeffrey Morgan. What are we going to do now? We uh, This is an unfamiliar environment for me. What's going on here? What is this? <laughs> so we're, we're in a word processor because we're going to talk about words. Word processor. <laughs> yes. Fascinating. What word processor are we in, by the way? This is uh, this is Google Docs. Okay. Google Drive, I think it's now called. Everyone could use this if they All right. Google okay. Account. All right. So if, we, if you're going to write, you're going to you're going to actually write on a keyboard. So we thought, okay, let's get out of let's get out of this handwritten stuff and let's get into a, a real keyboarding world. So I thought we today we're going to talk about nouns. All right, nouns. I remember that. Okay. So, you know, so nouns is actually a grammatical term. Uh, the, the really key idea behind nouns is naming things. Grammatical term, like, like subject, predicate, all these crazy things that exactly. you remember from grade school. Exactly. Adverbs, adverbs, conjunctions, grammatical you know. Term. But but nouns are about naming things. You're, you're, you're taking a strong stand against my entire education. Yes. <laughs> and, and actually naming a noun in a more understandable way by calling it something that names things. Exactly. And the, the power of a noun is, so why would I need a new noun? So if I had the word dog, why do I need the word cat? Right. And, and the answer is because cats don't come when they call, when you call. Dogs do. Right. There's okay? a difference between. So now I need the words dog and cat. So, so do I need the word cocker spaniel? Well, maybe not. If 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 I'm just a dog owner, but if I'm a if I'm a pet store owner, I need the word cocker spaniel. I'm not typing cocker spaniel because actually I, you wouldn't I know have how to spell it. Spell. Well, but, uh, cocker, ah, cocker spaniel, sort of like Spanish span, only with an span, L. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the spaniel <laughs> part is the easy part. I thought maybe cocker had an H in no, there. No, someplace. You're, you're doing good. Cocker spaniel. So what, is it is capitalized? Yeah, you, did, it's a, you, it's a you did good. You yeah, did good. We haven't gotten to that yet. But that's but but, but you're getting hung up on grammar, which I everybody am. does. I shouldn't have capitalized dog and cat though. Mm-hmm. So okay, but but yeah. you're you're, in, you're I'm getting hung up on grammar. You are getting hung up on grammar because I want to be a member of the ruling class. Exactly. So at least look like I am. What's funny, this is this is how people can put roadblocks in their in their writing because yes. they, they worry about grammar before they worry about logic. Yeah. I want to talk about the logic, which is why or the why does people care about a cocker spaniel? Well a pet store guy does because you know you might not people come in and they specifically want to buy a breed of dog and so yeah. and, and cocker spaniel has certain it, it attributes. It gives you precision. It gives you precision. It, it does. And what you notice about people is when they have an a, a, a area of expertise, they have lots and lots and lots of precise nouns in that mm. area. Sometimes we call it jargon. Yes. Okay. So jargon Jargon is just a bunch of nouns for, for specialists. And jargon itself is a noun. Jargon look itself. At that. There it is. And it all comes back. Now, and what's interesting about this, so look at the word jargon. Why do you need the word jargon? Because it gives you power over the world. It lets you identify a class of language and say, you know what? That language I don't need to understand. Those specialists need to understand it because they're nerds in that subject, but I don't need to. Or maybe I should, but I'm also going to tell them to stop using it Well, but, but, because well, they're preventing other people but, from understanding. And, and the issue with jargon is it, jargon doesn't prevent specialists from understanding each other. In fact, it probably helps mm. specialists, but it prevents generalists. Because right, it can get to precision faster. Exactly, exactly. So when you hang out in Silicon Valley with all these software people and they're always using three-letter yes. three acronyms, and you're going, well, what's CRM, SBT, whatever it is? Yes. It's like, okay. But they know what they're talking about. So the, the, that's all I would want to say about nouns is, look, you want to know, you want to know a bunch of general nouns to, work, to sort of work your way through the world. So there's, a set of, there's a set of vocabulary you just have to know to be a citizen. Mm-hmm. And then whatever you're passionate about, you should expect to get more and more nouns in that area because they're going to teach you the refined distinctions that make that area interesting and make you more powerful in that specialized area. What I think would be a fun way to end this. Yeah. Is to just list a bunch of nouns, okay, and maybe things that are not nouns. Okay, all right. So, so you, you want to just brainstorm? Or we'll, Let's we'll, brainstorm. We'll go ahead. You so, go. So, you, 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 you go first. All right. Chuck Norris is a noun. Chuck Norris. Yes, Chuck Norris is is is. is Some a noun. would argue he's maybe a verb <laughs> and a noun. Well, the, uh, and an adjective, <laughs> but he's definitely a noun. He's, he, this is a noun, and basically, the, what you're doing though is you're saying he's a body of forces. He is. The, the interesting thing about nouns is they always represent a body of forces. That's why we care about them. So, you know, water has the property of cooling, and mm-hmm. tables have the property of holding things up, and cups keep waters on tables. And, you know, I mean, the, when you nouns help you model how the world works. And so if you don't have enough nouns, you might not know how it works. And, but after a while, you don't need more nouns unless you've seen some new property in the world that you're trying to name. Love. Love. Okay, so now love is an abstract. Now, that's one of those ones where it's not a concrete noun. You can't hold it. Mm. It's not a person, place, or thing. Yes. I mean, I guess you could call it a thing, but it's really it's a relationship. Yes. And But it's powerful. And if you don't understand love, you have trouble you know, when you go home at night. 
So yes. Irony. Okay. Ooh. So irony is an interesting word. So irony is. But now, who needs to know the word irony? Which I think oh, I think it's Alanis Morissette. Uh, isn't it ironic? But most of her song is it's actually it's, isn't it unfortunate? <laughs> oh, wait, like, like I don't the guy know who's never ridden on a plane and he, the plane goes. That's unfortunate. That wasn't so ironic. That wasn't ironic. I guess there's a little bit of irony there. Well, but there's there's kind of yeah. There's sort of irony at one level is mm-hmm. two perspectives which don't link up. Mm-hmm. But 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 irony as a concept is a special. I would argue is a specialist word. Most people probably don't need the word irony, but a literary critic could not live without it. Yeah. And so, again, it's, it's what are you interested in? I mean, if you're interested in hockey, you know, you'll, you'll get that or, or, or soccer or golf. I'll do golf because I love golf. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, you, you need to know things about like a high fade. Well, what's a high fade? Well, it's a, it's a shot in golf or a flop shot or, you know, what's a lob wedge or, you know, that kind of stuff. And I threw swimming and golfing there because those sound like an action. They are, but when you talk about the action itself, you can make a, you, you're naming the action. So mm. swimming is good for you. I, I, I want to take swimming. Well, swimming lessons. That's actually it's modifying the word lessons. But, but language is a very so swimming very, is sometimes yes. a noun. Language is a very very mutable thing. Words yes. can be verbs, modifiers, nouns, um, and it's amazing when you try to teach a computer these rules. We still yes. can't do it. Yeah. But but kids learn it before they're Love five. is sometimes a noun. Yes, sometimes a noun, sometimes a, a, sometimes a verb. Exactly. And when you're talking about it as a noun, it means you're talking about the force of love. Yeah. When you're using it as a verb, you're talking about your relationship, being in a relationship of love to another person. So verbs connect nouns to each other. So John loves Mary, right? Yes. So now we've connected, you used a verb to connect two nouns together. Um, I'm also listing not nouns. Now. Not nouns. Yeah. So so eat, run. Uh, yeah, Lovely. Uh, lo, lo, no, yeah. So the, the, and basically, what you're going to find with the not nouns, there's going to be three other classes, but the action, all the action stuff. Then all the modifier stuff. So lovely is a modifier. Yeah. It's it's telling you Jane is lovely or it's a lovely day out. So these are eat and run or actions. That's uh, right. If we were yep. to use the grammatical fancy words, yep. verbs. Yep. yep, absolutely. Lovely is a modifier. Right. So it, it could be, it could, if, if it's modifying, if it's describing a noun, it would be an adjective. That's right. If it's describing a verb, it would be an adverb. Right. See, but I learned. I learned. Those are good, but yeah. the, that, that's the grammatical idea. Yeah, I don't want to, okay. Those are grammatical I get ideas. out of my whole well, ru- it's, ruling it's class a, insecurity. Well, it's the difference between semantics and, and syntax. Syntax is sometimes yes. the words used, but from a meaning point of view, yeah. And you need modifiers only to the degree that you want to be more precise about what's going on in the world, or you want to be more rhetorical. You want to actually create a, a bond with with your audience by using a modifier to connect with them emotionally. Those are the two classic reasons to use. Float is a verb. It, it's a, it, it describes an attribute of ivory soap uh, that does not an attribute not, of dial soap. I think, I think you're dating people, because I barely remember those guys. <laughs> that was apparently their their biggest claim to fame, is that the, the soap floats. It soap floats. It's exactly. amazing that, that, that marketers determined that people would buy soap based on the fact that it would Slow, it floats. I, I think actually they found out it floats. I think what happens, they probably did focus scripts to say, you know, the cool thing about this soap is it floats. Yes. <laughs> which to me tells me they put air in it, which means I'm getting less soap, but Pro- I don't know. But see, you're big. Now, now you're going the wrong way. That's too much logic. <laughs> that's too much logic and not enough rhetoric. Not enough rhetoric. Exactly. Yes, that's like, exactly true. Yeah. <laughs> so, so born. Okay. So, again, born is, is an action. It's also, a, um, you can use it as a modifier. I was born in, in, born in Portland, Oregon. So, mm. then it tells me something. Stuff like that. He was born. Yeah, he was, that, would he was, be, that would be modified. He was. It's a state. It was, well, or yeah, so it's a, yes. Yes. It's an intransitive verb. It's a state. I mean, no, so this is this is where the grammatical categories get very confusing and very complex. I actually don't like teaching grammar hmm. until people are well into their writing yeah. world because it really doesn't help. Right. Um, what does help is these four ideas: name things. That's the noun-like stuff. Uh, talk about actions and relationships. That's the verb-like stuff. Be more precise about either one of those. That's the modifier stuff. Mm. And the fourth one we haven't talked about is words like and, but, although, when. They're called conjunctions. And that's about how do you link I'll write them here because we're just together. saying not nouns. We're yeah, throwing yeah, everything okay. in this so fucking right now. I put in and, and, when. You but, know, when, although, although. Exactly. Yes. Cool ways of talking about how two ideas here relate to, to each other. Heretofore, therefore, I, moreover. <laughs> more, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I can't even speak, yeah. And then one thing, there's one class of grammar people should just know about all the prepositions in, out, above, around, whatever. It turns out that they're always using, used in a modifying way. So you, you never use in by itself. It's like the boy in the car. Mm. And in the car just tells you more precisely yes. something about the boy. Into. Yeah, exactly. Above, around, uh, of. 
Yeah. Uh, no, the, uh, no. Us can act. Us actually oh. a little. Us, us a little grammatical blurp. It, it's, it's, but it's not a noun. No, it's 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 an, it's, a, it's actually a form of modifier. It's, but it's not a noun. No, it's so not. It it yeah, that's true. It's uh, not a noun. No, that's all we're talking about. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're totally right. Very cool. Well, this is this was fun. We should do more of these. I like these.